welcome everybody. It's live with Bridget Lynn Dolgoff on the Consciousness of Economics show on the new Project Camelot TV network. And big shout out to Carrie Cassidy. She's moving mountains for all of us to bring you all kinds of entertaining educational information. And huge shout out to my web producer, Kat, who makes all of this work for me. Um, today... Do, do, do. No. <laughs> we have Marsha and Ralph Ring, and if you haven't uh, seen their information, you can find a lot of videos on them um, in the, from their past on the Blue Star Enterprises um, dot com. And uh, I would highly recommend the DME Holland interview that they did. But today we. You know, we're going to get a little bit into their past, but we also want to talk about who they are today. And I met Ralph through um, a mutual friend. I didn't really know his work until like about a year ago. Heard a lot about him. Uh, and a good friend of ours that connected us, I said, hey, you know, could you help me interview Ralph Ring? And she said, yeah, oh yeah, of course. He's um, out of this world. I said, all right, I love out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> So I ended up talking to them a couple weeks ago about being on the show, and they said, yes, we'll be on the show. And I probably spoke to them maybe 20 minutes, and I was having kind of a rough day, um, just trying to move energy forward. And after talking to them for 20 minutes, like, I literally felt like love was, like, bathed on me, and everything just kind of came, became quiet and kind of more aligned. And I realized that even though we only talked 20 minutes, like we had a big non-physical connection. Um, and for me, the word that kept coming up is parents. So I'm thinking that they probably have some kind of connection with my star family and are probably here, manifest. And I get to finally meet them now <laughs> in, the, in the now. Um, so there's... Um, so we have Marsha. You see Marsha back there with her beautiful little dragonfly necklace. And she is the loving partner of Ralph Ring, the um, man who studied under Carr, who studied under Tesla. And so, Ralph, would you like to, um, or Marsha, like to give us a little bit of a commentary about who you are? <laughs> Go, Marsha. Go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Ralph Ring's partner, that's who I am. Um, I met Ralph in the early 1980s and he, uh, I was holding meetings in my home and he came and shared his fantastic story at that time of working with Otis Carr. And so I do want to turn it over to Ralph because... Yeah. Because it's Ralph's story, and I'm sharing it with him, and I love every minute of it, but it is his story. Well, uh, it's, it's <laughs> been our story for quite some time. Yes, Known yes. each other for over 30 years, about 34 years now, or something like that. And uh, she's gone through marriages. I've gone through marriages. My wife's two of them have died, passed away, and and uh, her uh, relationships have have. Uh, slightly faded away so uh, when we started to uh, talk about you know we, we in fact she traveled with my wife and I all over the United States giving lecture tours and then when my wife passed away uh, well even before we were very very close and we decided that uh, well why don't we keep this going because we're very close to the source and everything we do and so we have a common common interest in in the um, in everything so she said yeah okay so so we started traveling together we've gone you know now we've gone globally we've gone different places in the world and we'll be con continuing to do that but um so that's 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 marcia and i and we we are very close on on um on seeing things in the same light at the same time and the same place it's very it's phenomenal you know, we don't have uh, a lot of thinking to do. We just have a lot of being to do, and it, it, it uh, resonates and uh, flows, as Marcia calls it. She, when <clears throat> we first got together, I was telling her about rowing the boat down the stream. Just to, you know, don't worry about anything. Don't don't get too close to the shore and try to hang on. Just keep going. 
And she said, I was working too hard. She says, why, why are you rowing? You just flow, flow, flow down the stream. <laughs> so that was enough for me. I threw my oars away and started flowing. So, yeah, that was good. So yeah, we, one, of the, one of the things uh, that um, inspired me about you is, is talking to you on the phone was that um, you – really love each other and then watching that Holland um, interview you can just really see like there's this really deep connection and touching and just really beautiful energy you know that happens between you two and you had said on the phone well if um, if you don't go together you don't make the decisions together then you get blocked and so you guys work at always being in sync and moving forward so that it moves the whole thing forward Yes, it, it does. It's uh, it's phenomenal because the things that I forget or the things that I don't re, uh, recall at the moment, she seems to come up with it and keeps things on a on a, at least a compatible uh, platform where people can understand what we're what we're doing and what we're saying. Because some of the stuff is is not your ordinary conversations that you get at the at the laundromat or something. It's a little different. So. <laughs> a little bit different. Yeah. Um, yeah. This happened, um, Bridget, is that we, we I used to travel to, with he and his wife, and I would, uh, if he got off the, I would be sitting in the audience, and if he got off track or I thought he should be moving on, I would write big notes, and he couldn't read them. <laughs> And so he'd say, I don't know what you're telling me, Marcia. And so eventually I thought, okay, he brought me up and we sat side by side, side by side. Then he couldn't hear me when I was talking to him. <laughs> so it, that's how I joined him in, in actually talking. So it's been a fun trip, but it's been very, very uh, warm and fuzzy. And yet, um, in the first, the beginning of it, it, it was before all of the consciousness was open. Uh, you didn't talk to too many people about UFOs or anything like that. And so most of Ralph's invitations have been in the UFO field of, because of the spaceship that was created, you know, at, in the 1959-60s. So it's been a, a journey, very exciting. Right now, it seems like... Um, this is a this is a transition time, and it's it's a very very exciting time that we're in right now. And but we we were talking earlier about you know coming through uh, since 1980 when when you didn't talk too much about this and how much more open it is now and how many people are actually following and raising their consciousness and becoming that oneness that we all are. Yeah, it makes it makes it a lot easier on us because then when we started first to, um, as we call it, raise the consciousness, there was you know there was a lot of uh, confusion as to what we were talking about and what do you mean and then what 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 does that uh, in, incur and so forth. But it's caught on, and now there's there's many many what's referred to as light workers around the world that have picked up the the gauntlet and and uh, traveled with it and <clears throat> are doing great work. I mean, every everywhere you go now, you're hearing about consciousness. It's not a foreign word anymore. It's who we are and what we are. And uh, going into the ascension stages now, we, we try to uh, enlighten people by uh, getting them, instead of learning anything, getting them to remember who and what they are. Uh, we're we're immortal, infinite beings that have been around forever, and we're here now, and we'll be going on forever. There's nothing new about that. We're energy. Before we're uh, thought of as a body, we have <coughs> we're a field of energy that that um, moves and gravitates through the energy fields as as we so choose. But people have forgotten that and uh, have get caught up in the in their own creation, actually, creating a, a world from their thoughts, which we all do, everything, everything is, is, is uh, manifested, but they um, forget that they're more than they think they are, and they feel that there is a, there is us, and then there's a, a, a divinity that goes on, uh, 
from here to there or we to them or whatever and it it's until they put that together and become one with who they are we are everything and we share that together collectively like the trillions of cells that we have in our body we're one of them and so is everybody else and we all interact in everybody else's world everybody creates their own realities and we we do the same so we interface more and more and the only thing that's ever gotten in the fear in the way was fear people were afraid to move forward because the educational system for the last hundred years has been very very um, smothering I guess is a word I could use because we've been told that uh, from the cradle to the grave that's all we've got this is it so you better make the best of it you better find a good job and and whether you like it or not go to work every day and and uh, make money and and uh, pursue the the American dream and uh, <laughs> it's been kind of hard getting people to let go of that idea and realize they don't have to do anything all they have to do is be themselves be who they are because we're infinite beings and the more we discard the ideas and the ideas are created by us but the the uh, divine consciousness, if you will, that that is a part of all of us, can guide us if we let go of our ideas and uh, blend in with the collective consciousness and follow it. That's using our intuitions for, for guidance, our inner pilot light, as we call it sometimes. Because if you are trying to outthink yourself, you'll always get in, into trouble. You're in a squirrel cage because everything repeats. We're in a in a system of duality, the third dimension is, is obviously a, a right and wrong, up and down, left and right uh, reality. And that's, that's very infinite. It's very, uh, very dense in, in the quality of living as living goes. And uh, we, don't, we don't have to stay there. We can move on. But it isn't externally trying to move on or trying to do anything. It's going in, inside in, in ways of meditation or... Uh, quiet times of getting away from things that we don't like into things that we do like and that includes your job and your your taste of music or food and everything and if we're not doing what feels good to us all the time then we're still lagging behind in the, in the, the ascension process because this ascending is into a reality a multi-dimensional reality that that exists in pure feelings of, of joy and, and, uh, and splendor and, and divine uh, inspirations continuously. So uh, can you get into your plan? I just, I, it's, but while Ralph is talking, I'm thinking everything that we've been programmed with up through the years, and Ralph and I are quite elderly, really, at this yeah. time. We're, we're <laughs> young, but we're, we've got some age on these bodies. But anyway, we've been so programmed throughout the years to do a certain thing, to act a certain way. And now when we, when we really realize, when we're awakening, waking up and remembering who we were re truly created to be, it's very, it seems difficult to let go of all the programming, all of the control issues that, you know, you, you're, you gotta go and, and punch a clock and you've gotta do all of these things. And it's so wonderful now to see people like you, Bridget, going out and being guided with your God, with your, your inner guidance, no matter what. And it's, it's a wonderful time. We had um, a visitation from a, a friend that calls us mom and dad when you're talking about parenting, a lady named Lynn McCollum, and she brought four young men that they were traveling together, just just joined together to go for the blood moon ceremony in um, Santa, Santa Barbara. Barbara. And they stopped by, and it was just a magnificent time to share you know, one of the fellows is from Canada. One is from Hawaii. I mean, they're they're from every different different yeah, places. Yeah. Arizona and I don't know. They were all different, and it was like we are now coming together right now at this time 
joining together, like you said, your your family is coming back, your spiritual family is coming together. We might not see these guys again, and yet we might be working with them side by side with whatever's next. And it's so fun. And it's so fun to meet you and to be here on the on your show. Yeah. Thank you for doing what you're doing, Bridget. Thank well, you. thank well, thank you. Thank you for coming on. I um in shamanism we call becoming fully conscious um, dreaming awake it's when you can take your night dream where it's magical and you can you know go from here to there and produce whatever you want in your dream levitate uh, and you can bring it into your waking dream so that your waking dream and your sleeping dream are no longer separate that you're conscious all the time and um, there are very few acts on this planet I was lucky enough to have bloodlines and family members that could produce dreaming awake acts. And one of the things that really like nailed me between the eyes and I, I got so excited um, was on the interview with the Holland uh, DEM and, and Ralph starts talking about the spaceship and that how it starts to vibrate in a certain way and it becomes not really solid anymore and you can kind of stick your hand in and out of it. And I'm like, that's like, that's like your night dream. That's dreaming awake. You brought that into the waking world. And um, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, just, the, sure. just about that kind of level of consciousness that is necessary for something like that. Well, I was fortunate enough to be raised in the in the woods, and so the early part of my life was was through the uh, the you know up through the eighth grade was was in the woods. So. What I learned the most of was natural law and how simple and easy nature does anything without any effort. It just happens because everything flows together. And so um, um, when I got out into the outer world and started seeing that everything that was supposed to be easy was everybody, everybody was making it hard work and, and, and trying and hoping and and the wanting things that it's no longer necessary to do those things and and uh, I decided well geez I better share with them what I learned about nature one way or another so that they can get the same benefits that that I've had most of my life and um, and now Marsha because manifesting is, as such is, is something we all do we just don't realize it anymore so we get in a car and go from point A to point B because it's uh, it's uh, accepted that's the way we, we transport ourselves from A to B in a car or an airplane or whatever. And um, that's part of it, but that's not all of it because actually as soon as we think of point B, we're already there. It's just a matter of choice of how we get there. And when we realize that we're infinite beings with infinite power, we start uh, modifying our modes and of transportation and habitation and and moving about in in the consciousness of, of the mind uh, so I decided that when I working for the government for a while and, and, and they were doing things according to me backwards and I had to show them the simplicity of, of things that I could do at home with with very little equipment, some stuff I'd get at garage sales, I could put them together and get, get magnificent results from. So I, um, I was uh, attracted to a group called Understanding out of Costa Mesa, California, and they were in touch with Otis Carr, who was in Oklahoma City building spaceships, and I said, well, that's, that's good, I'll get together with somebody who wants to do the same thing I do, and, um, and, and then we'll show them how. So long story short, uh, they sent for Carr and his entourage. They came out. We were put up at uh, Lake Arrowhead, and um, it wasn't long before uh, Carr and I became very, very uh, close in consciousness. We were just one. We had one magnificent uh, time um, in an altered state of consciousness, which explained how simple everything was. Simple to him, simple to me, and was simple to, to uh, Tesla as well. Um, 
So anyway, as far as I was concerned, I felt, well, in order to to affect a change in, in the system, in the, the, the life that we live in, I'd have to um, find something to wake people up, to, to uh, give them something, uh, a worthy goal to shoot for. So the spaceships came up and we started working on spaceships, but to me personally it was a ploy to get people to learn how to do it themselves. You don't, it's like a Merkabah that's and the spaceship is just a symbol of what we can do ourselves. But it was a fascinating start because people immediately thought, oh, well, this is, this is great, and so forth. So uh, we, we got together and, and we were performing things that uh, just weren't done every day in the, in the outer, outer system. And one of them was, was, was which the, the changing the... Um, the perspective of time and space, it, it really only exists when you want it to. It's our creation, it's not nature's creation. It, it happens naturally. And then we can grab onto it and and say this is point A and point B and it's so far and so fast and so forth. But <clears throat> when you become consciously awake, you realize there is no time and space unless you create it. So that uh, being energy, we only have to focus our mind on a different uh, perspective, a different uh, um, uh, 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 destination, one like Hawaii, think of Hawaii, white sands and aquamarine water and coconut trees, see we're already there, we can instantly, beyond the speed of, of light, we're already there. And in order to, to make that happen, one has to keep working on it until the fear and the doubts go away. And fear is another thing that we create, we help, we co-creators with fear because it doesn't really exist unless we want it to. And it's a good thing, it's not a bad thing. You have to make friends with, with everything, including your fear and your doubts and, and everything. And if you don't, then you're still stuck because you're, you're dividing again. In, unless you become one in your consciousness, where everything is love, everything is good, everything is one, um, then you're stuck in the in the uh, duality system, and and it doesn't. You're not going to go very far. It just keeps spinning around and around. We've duplicated ourselves, with, especially with the combustion engine now, for <laughs> over over a hundred years, two hundred years of combustion engines, and uh, they they're 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 obsolete. They, we don't need them. And we've polluted the, you know, the environment. We've, we've uh, tapped into Mother Earth and used her fuel or her <laughs> basics to use for fuel for us and so forth. And they're they're really uh, they're not necessary. So anyway, I decided to use consciousness as a as a topic to explain to people. Don't be afraid of yourself. Don't be afraid to love yourself completely. And don't worry about the thing called the ego. That's a part of it. And you have to make friends with the ego. <coughs> you, can't, you can't ignore it. You can't get rid of it. You can't hide from it. So you make friends with it. And, and uh, uh, when you get strong enough, courageous enough, you face it and say, well, get in the back seat. I'll handle this one. When I need you, I'll call you. In other words, you don't succumb to the ego's drive. Because the ego is very important. Well, what we're doing now is all... Uh, this presentation, it takes takes the ego, the motivation to, to do it, to put it together, to, to you know, it's all important. Uh, it's just the perception of ego that has to be changed. It's not a, it's not an enemy, and uh, it seems only to be a, uh, uh, an enemy. It's it's a, it's really uh, a friend when you need it because it'll keep you out of trouble if you uh, if you use it. If it uses you, then you get you get caught. Honey, help me out here a little bit. I want you to come back to what Bridget asked you. Yeah, I know. I don't know. It's it's a, it's like how did you stick your hand through? Oh, well, it's aluminum. What it, what it was it? Grade seven aluminum. Oh no, T six aluminum. T six aluminum. It's the same way I walked through the walls in Prescott. Okay, that's yeah. what she asked, yeah, and I would like you to just tell her how because. You did that. Because in consciousness, 
and we can all do this right now. We're living in a dream that we're creating in nanoseconds. There's no, the reality is beyond this dream. We came into this dream, but we got stuck here. I mean, seemingly we got stuck. We're really not stuck. We're on our journeys. Each one has their own way and their own perspective. But, but um, uh, it's getting rather uh, uh, boring and dangerous and, uh, you know, uncomfortable. And it's time that we raise the, the bar or, you know, raise the consciousness enough for people to realize they don't, they don't have to stay here. They can, they can uh, start working on themselves by realizing who and what they are and um, progress to a multidimensional uh, way of life here and now. I mean, you can operate in the third dimension and be in it, but not of it. You can you keep your consciousness high enough to where everything seems to be, but really isn't, because you know it isn't. It's, it's, it's only a creation, an, an illusion, if you will. So, so uh, that's uh, what I started to do, and it's being effective. People are calling us. We get engineers quitting engineering school and coming to us wanting to get into one of our pods. We have pods all over the world. Hundreds of books. Hang on, turn up, go. <laughs> Telephone. I forgot to mute it before we got on. That's okay. It's, it's, called, it's life. called life. It's real life. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what happened. That's, real life in but, the now. <laughs> if you celebrate life and all the good, all the things that you think are a disturbance or a, um, an intervention or uh, a, a negative or evil uh, uh, projection to you. Uh, if you think it is, then it is. But if you turn it around and celebrate it and say, well, thank you for that call. I needed a break. She needed to go hang up the phone and we needed to, to change the subject or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, well and, uh, so, so I'm going to just kind of keep going with questions that um, that I think you're where you're at. You're what you want to talk about. Your higher self. It's better and more in alignment with. So I'm going to kind of move to that. So you know, in First Nation um, belief system, we learn how to walk the path. The red road means that we have to um, learn to have relationships and have good relationships with everything around us. Like you were pointing out. Fear, ego, sometimes it can be emotional, sometimes it can be with the environment. If you want to use certain plant medicines, it's, they're going to work a lot better for you if you have a relationship with them and touch them and grow them. Um, but one of the things that I love, because I have this connection too, um, when I was four to five years old, I had a reoccurring stigmata, um, burn stigmata. And um, once I came out of it, I started raising bugs from the dead. And the ones that liked it the most and really were excited about teaching me were bees. So bees were always the easiest ones to raise from the dead. And you have all these bee stories. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And so um, do you want to talk a little bit about how your bees have taught you, like outside of that window when you're trying to figure out that project and it was telling you the information? And you want to give us a little bit of your relationship to bees? Sure. They're 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 one of my all time favorite creatures. They they have it all together. <laughs> they <laughs> if you study bees, you're you're going to be pleasantly surprised every minute because they do things differently but very harmoniously, and they work together. They can put ten thousand bees in one in one place, and they don't uh, they don't really fight. They move each other out of the way or something, but they they're very harmonious in what they do. They have a common goal and. It's just beautiful. Well, my experience um, with the, in reference to what you're talking about was <clears throat> I was in science class, and uh, which, which was a brief uh, uh, departure from, from nature. I went into to academics to find out what they were doing and how they were doing it. And the first thing that came up was the uh, the bumblebee uh, can't fly because it's aerodynamically it doesn't have the ability to lift its weight off the ground and so forth, and so it doesn't um, it, it 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 can't really fly, and uh, 
So I was looking out the window in, in, the, in the science class and a big, beautiful bumblebee was staring me in the face and challenging me. And when you've raised with nature, everything's your friend. So you can create the <coughs> metaphors or whatever is necessary to communicate. You don't have to use words. You can use feelings or gestures or body language or anything. So he was, uh, to me, uh, uh, beckoning me, come on, get out of there, I'll show you. So I, I really got away from that because I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't like to be told something couldn't, couldn't happen. And um, so along the way, one of the, um, our PR man in, in, the, uh, uh, in our, uh, in our um, endeavor was uh, a man by the name of uh, Wayne Aho, and he had a brother by the name of uh, Arthur Aho, who wrote a book, um, Tomorrow's Fuel Need Not Be Energy. And uh, for those that are interested, it's a very fascinating book on natural law. It's in the Library of Congress, and you can find it in, in different places on the internet. It's called uh, Tomorrow's Energy Need Not Be Fuel. Well, I got together with him, and I told him about the bumblebee thing. He says, well, that's simple. He says, I'll explain it to you. They don't really fly. They levitate. And the way they levitate, next to their larynx and their, in their throat, they have a little hollow tube, a little cavity. And... Uh, what happens when they start beating their wings, they reach the resonant frequency of their surrounding. And to make it simple, in this case, the Schumann frequency in those days was 8.7 hertz or cycles per second. <clears throat> now they're changing because the whole world is changing. The globe is changing. Our, our atmosphere and everything is changing. But once you reach the resonant frequency of anything, you free yourself from what's called gravity. You free yourself from the, the um, magnetic fields that are holding the, um, the uh, um, place that you're at together. So, and you can change that because you, once you resonate at that field, and the bumblebee does this and creates a little a sphere around itself. It's just a We all have a sphere around ourselves. It's all magnetic field that's holding this so-called body together, this energy is held together by a magnetic field. So is everything. And so when you do that and you reach the resonant frequency, that's how I put my hand in the, in the, uh, in the craft, <clears throat> then you become uh, what's called the zero point. You reach a point where there's a neutrality, there's an equal neutrality. You're on harmonious stages with, with the laws of nature and you can affect a change once you understand what, you, what, what, that, what that means. So, um, uh, so now I, I talk about the bumblebee and, it, and, and it's, it's, it's just a form of levitation and I found there's, there's lizards that, that levitate. There's, uh, I've seen lizards go across a, a pond that was 200, two to, three, two to 300 feet wide and the lizard went completely across the pond because he was in tune with the natural forces and the magnetic fields. His magnetic field was resonating with the, the magnetic field that was enabling him to cross the, uh, cross the river, the, the pond. So, I have a question for you. Lizard. Yeah. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, on our planet, we probably have several ways that you know we can cause levitation or you know get into that natural flow so that we're not limited right and we're not uh we can achieve lifting or um past you know our belief systems um and so what do you think about chanting and have you ever thought about i mean because there are traditional like old school tibetan monks that you know can actually levitate by chanting, um, but and then also maybe comment on that, and then also what what was what was exactly what you used in order to cause the Schumann resonance resonance and being able to levitate the craft. 
Well, it, it was a collective consciousness of all of us because we realized that the, by using your mind instead of your, your intellect or your uh, academia, uh, using your mind to guide you uh, and realizing the, the, uh, the laws of nature, that by uh, focusing your attention and clearing your mind, you're, you, you're clearing your brain. And we made a distinction between the brain and the mind because the brain is, is really, to us, a computer that has a job of operating this machine in which, which we inhabit, the, the body. And it, it's busy with its own job and it doesn't, it's not interested in anything beyond the, the, um, the third dimension, if you will. It's, it's just, uh, so you have to clear that by getting still or getting into a meditative state of mind and then focusing on what your mind can do. And um, let's see, what's a good description of how we can, what we've been doing? Um, can you help me out? Well, or? one of the comments that I always say, I always say, and I always feel, if if we can, if man can, our mind can conceive, man can achieve yeah, yeah. anything that that's been done ever. We have that same uh, energy, that same vibration that we can tune into. We can we can go into and actually like levitate or. Yeah. Uh, you know, travel, uh, well, that is levitation, but but teleporte, all these different things that any of us have ever thought, they're all available to us. And acoustical levitation, which is, is, is the case in, in, in good music or, or the ohm, the chants, the different various chants, uh, the, uh, once you start um, resonating, and we belong to a singing group here in Paradise, Marsha and I, and, <clears throat> and every once in a while we'll hit harmony, what's called harmony together. It's a resonating feel where we hit the same note on the same time in the same place. And it's just like every one of us in the, in the class, <clears throat> our hair goes up on the back of our head because it's, it's just so beautifully in harmony that it's resonating out the sound and the field of energy is all around us. So music, uh, chanting, uh, we use Om sometimes. Um, we don't we don't um, pray conventionally anymore. We give thanks to what we've already give, been given. We've been giving every everything that that uh, that the Creator itself has given us. So we have only to use it and, and seek the the wisdom, the love, and the intelligence to to use it wisely to 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 progress and. Um, so we do use, we do use uh, ohms of Marsh and I. Um, just well, and everybody does this. Uh, parking places is a good example. I mean, uh, th those are we were doing those ten years ago. But uh, as an example for the audience that haven't tried that, it's just making an intention when you get to your destination, there'll be a place for you to park. Don't try to create it yourself. Just create an intention. Because if you want something, you're going to chase want forever because it doesn't go anywhere. It goes around and around in circles. But intention is what you do, and then you focus. And then your, your field of energy starts resonating with, the, with your destination, wherever you want to go. And by the time you get there, you'll have every time a place to park that's, that's uh, convenient. Uh, Ralph, and then with, that's there. Go ahead. With the craft, though, you actually use color. Well, yeah, yeah that's well, that's what I, I was going to get to, too, is um, I was trying to bring lots of different things that people could resonate with, because a lot of people, um, well, there are a lot of people that are waking up, and so they want to know, like, how you stepped up to where you're at, you know, what, what kind of things did you utilize, sound, um, uh, color, and the... Throw it, throw it in the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I'm sorry. We were talking about the um, the aqua uh, in the video I watched. You said that the people on the craft, you and your people who made it yeah. and designed it, okay. um, actually actually utilized a color too, a color frequency. I think you said it was like aqua marine, mm -hmm. aqua marina, and so why would you use that color? 
And what kind of frequency does it put out? I mean, obviously, it can help levitate, right? Or go through the time-space continuum? Yeah, well, first of all, um, we, don't, we, don't, we don't create anything. We don't create our own color or anything by our own des- decisions. We use what's, what nature has. And in this case, our engineers went down. They wanted to find a place where we could test flight our craft. Uh, and flight's a misnomer. I'm sorry. It's not a flight. It's just a, because it, it goes outside and back in through time. It doesn't, it doesn't move through space like an airplane or like a, you know, uh, a rocket or something. So um, the engineers went down, down the line and they took, a, and I'm just a lab tech, so I don't know a lot of the things that they use, but they use this instrument to measure the area that they wanted the destination to be, be for the craft. And they measured it in uh, frequencies, which equated to uh, a light, which is equated to color, because all all light is is white, and and when it's disturbed, it becomes you know different you know billions millions of different colors, but that area that we wanted to uh, to come to, uh, when they measured it, it kept going onto their scope as the light frequency of aquamarine that was in that area. You could move maybe a half a mile away, and it would be a different different color, but. But that in that area was was the color of aquamarine, so we had only then to vibrate our craft and ourselves uh, in the frequencies of the the light frequency of of aquamarine in order to um, free ourselves from um, the third dimension, if you will, to get beyond time and space. We went outside. We were gone uh, just a few, I think two or three minutes at base, but downrange we experienced later uh, when I uh, analyzed it about 10 or 15 minutes there. So there's a difference in, and it's all perception. There is no reality. It's, everything is really, we, we, the truth is effectively shared with people by metaphors more than trying to decide what color you were or wore or what uh, what time of day it was or something. It doesn't matter. The details don't matter when you're focusing on, on moving about. So we had a crystal in the center. Now the, the heart of the craft is what we call the electrical accumulator. It's, it's just a hollow cavity. It's shaped like a diamond. There's two uh, it's a double tetrahedron, like two ice cream cones on top of each other. And it's just a hollow cavity. There's nothing inside. But it's made out of a, a certain uh, aluminum that um, is very, very uh, pleasing to use. And it's very, very um, uh, sensitive to vibrations. So when you vibrate that that uh, light color, that frequency of aquamarine inside this cavity, then pretty soon it, it, it expands out through and encompasses the craft so that you really become the same frequency as downrange what the land was downrange. And then you just blend into that beyond time and space. And it's hard to explain to somebody that doesn't, doesn't, uh, hasn't been familiar with that kind of talk. But it's really, um, it's really simple. We are, our bodies, we were sitting there, three of us inside the craft, and our bodies didn't seem to go anywhere. In fact, that was, it took me quite a while after the experiment to, to uh, realize what I'd done and how we did it and so forth. Um, because um, it's not the, it's not the, it's not the composition of material like the body and the craft that moves. It's the energy fields that move. We perce- perceive it as, as a solid, but there is no solid anywhere. It's all in, in pixels, if you will. It's all moving in, in, in um, harmonious streams and, and dots of, of energy. So anyway, um, we... Um, uh, 
when we got back, we we questioned that we'd even moved, and Carr said, "Come on down for debriefing." And, and we we said, "Well, we didn't move. We didn't go anywhere because we were thinking about going, for the most part, uh, physically, like we get in a vehicle and move from one place to another." But it wasn't like that because our minds were moving, and the accumulator is not a generator. A lot of people mistake that and try to build free energy devices making generators. And actually, we're letting in a whole sea of energy. It's, there's energy everywhere, and all you have to do is accumulate it by building the, the proper type of cavity and resonate within that cavity to effectively change what you need to change. And we do that in our minds. When um, Marsha's manifested refrigerators and, and suitcases and everything around here, she's been, she's just, and, and it's all delightful. It's all very... Tell her one of the incidents, maybe. Well, the most recent, I, we have a very small place here in Paradise, California, and so I always put my winter clothes, I, I pack them in suitcases, and then store them so they, they don't get dusty or bugs in them or anything like that. So I thought, well, I, I really could use another suitcase, Ralph. And he says, well... We, we'll see if we can get one. In two days, there were five suitcases, <laughs> one, one of which we bought at a, at a thrift store. The rest were just, they just came in. Yeah. And other people say, I have a suitcase you can have. No, I don't need any more. I've got two or three of them still empty. But She had uh, to cancel the intention. I mean, you have to be careful. <laughs> You really, really, and that's the truth. You have to be very careful. And the, the refrigerator was probably a more exciting thing. It was like we go to a, a place like a food bank. We pay for it on a monthly basis, and we go every Friday, and we get this food from a, a place that's called Gleaners. And so we they give you all kinds of food, and we are just the two of us, and we don't eat all of it. So at first when we were going there, I would store it out in the garage or bring it in the house, but I didn't have room. We only had one refrigerator with a side-by-side -side refrigerator freezer. So I said, gee, Ralph, I'd like to have a refrigerator or freezer. We could save this food because we give most of the food to a um, depressed area. It's, it's a t little town called Herlong. It's uh, up about, what, three months, three hour drive from here. Yeah. And there's many children. It's a, it's a depressed town and they have, there's, there's a prison there. And, but anyway, the, the children are need, in need. And so we decided at that, at the first the time, we were just losing a lot of the food before we could give it away. At that time, we were just giving it away here in town to, to different people. So I said, and Ralph said, we don't have any room for another refrigerator or freezer. And so I said, okay. Well, we went and helped a, little, a lady with three children move furniture down to a thrift store. And Ralph went in the back with the guys moving the stuff in the store. And I went into the front of the store, walked in the front door, and I couldn't go very far because there were five people standing there talking. So I just stood there and listened. And this young man, um, very tall young man, said, well, where can I take my refrigerator? I I I would He's like to bring to it donate. here. And they said, Oh no, we don't we don't take appliances here. And they said, You need to take it to the dump. It, it'll cost you twenty five dollars. He said, But it's a perfectly good refrigerator. And Double so door. I I said to him, Well, what's wrong with it? He says, Oh, nothing. He said, I remodeled. We're remodeling the house, and it, we don't have room for that refrigerator. And so I unplugged it this morning. He said, I, if you're interested, I'll deliver it, I'll balance it, I'll do everything for you. And I said, wait, 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 I'm very interested, but I've got to check with my husband. And, and so Ralph came in the front door and, and it, I said, we could put it in your, in your man cave, the garage. And so anyway, it did happen. And, and since then, we've been able to save most of that food and deliver it to where it needs to go. So yeah, was there was a need. I yeah. guess that's what I'm trying to say. There was a need for it, and it just came like that. Yeah, we Within saw the need and put an intention out, and, and it happened. And he was very, very, uh, very humble. He gave us his card, and he said, if you have any trouble or you want me to move, remove it, I'll come and pick it up and take it to the dump or find another place for it. I mean, it, it just 
and that that's all of us can do these things though because yeah. we've been given all we've been we were get we were gifted with that yeah. anything that, that I, like I said mind can can see yeah, mind can achieve that. I think one thing that that is helpful to bring things like this to you is if you have a need in service of some sort it doesn't necessarily be, mean you have to have that but it helps I think. In the ascension process, we're removing ourselves gradually from the old uh, paradigm, which consists of old ways, old habits, old uh, 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 things that we used to use, um, which is in language, which is in uh, diet, uh, which is in uh, different areas, and, and just letting them disappear and grabbing onto a new and different idea, and, and that's that's how you effectively. Um, evolve to a higher state of consciousness. You can, you can um, realize to yourself the old ways of saying things in words, and then effectively change those words and notice a difference almost instantly. But if you continue to do it, then your whole life lightens up because you're not carrying that load of of negative, of what's so called negative. Um, vibrations that don't work anymore because we're going to a higher uh, vibratory rate. We're, we're accelerating very, very quickly now, if you want to use the word accelerate, uh, to a, a point where um, <clears throat> it's no longer necessary to, to have a duality. It's simply have an intention of you want peace or you want uh, happiness or whatever and, and put an intention on it and don't uh, use the old uh, fear and doubts and trying and all the other techniques that, that don't get you anywhere. Just say, well, I intend this and let it go. Turn it over to the universe. And Marsha so, and I... So, good. I just had I this just thought. Had this thought. <laughs> While you were talking. You were talk you, because you yeah. talked about how the, the... Okay, by the way, let me just say this really quick. In case you've just tuned in and you don't know who Ralph Ring is, when he was young, he made UFOs, spacecrafts, and traveled in them <laughs> using vibration. <laughs> um, and then after we get done with this part, uh, we're going to talk about the free energy pods that he's built in his later life. Um, but one of the things I wanted to say was that I started kind of thinking about your spacecraft and how you said it has to have a certain holder um, in order to do the accumulation, right, to get to the right frequency. And then I really started looking at my body as you were talking about our ascension, and I thought, maybe we've just accumulated enough. <laughs> oh, wow. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We've accumulated enough that we can change our vessel so that we can vibrate at a different vibration at, yeah. at a different vibration yeah. well so, you can notice the difference in 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 just a word i use the word fear and you can feel the vibration if you take and just focus on that word for a minute and what it represents to you and then take the word love and watch the difference in how you feel I mean, it's really a physical change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I really like this word accumulate in a positive yeah. way, like not in a weird hoarding way or anything like that, but maybe I've just accumulated enough experience through whatever life experiences I've had to change my vessel in this place, this time and space so that I can, um, you know, accumulate and go where I'm going to go but it's a good word well, kind of accumulate means kind of makes me feel like enough you know there's been enough right there's nothing I have to do yes, right there's nothing um, yeah. you um, it's already created in there it's reason. already done everything is done yeah. and, uh, and that's comforting the way that Marsh and I explain it to, in some groups you, if you work from the end of your story or the end of your life forward instead of backward, <laughs> you'll find that it, it it's already done. So all you have to do is uh, every, you can call it destiny or whatever labels that anybody wants to put on it, 
But if you know it's already done, then you don't have to do anything. You just stay out of the way. And Marsha and I have disengaged from Marsha and Ralph, per se, and became a part of you and everything and everybody else in, in the multiverse. That's, that's what makes it all possible because we don't identify on a personal level anymore unless we need to or want to or somebody else uh, expects us to. But you, you become a part of, of everything. So Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm um, kind of, you know, jamming along in that energy these days. Um, I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit of whatever you could speak about um, because it's going to lead into another question or inquiry that I had. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but did you want to talk about the pods a little bit and kind of explain to people I mean, these are free energy. They've already been developed. They've already been created. You've been part of creating it with other people in their multiverses. Um, and that the only thing that's standing in the way, really, of free energy right now globally is awareness and where people are at consciously, right? So would you like to just discuss that a little bit to help sure. maybe get people to wake up so we can have free energy? Come on, people. <laughs> Let's get some free energy. Well. <laughs> It goes back. I, I was uh, I was retired and perfectly, you know, out of the out of any kind of <clears throat> external explanations. I got tired of trying to talk to people because everybody thought I was uh, not real. And until uh, Carrie Cassidy and, and uh, Bill Ryan came into my life, and they said, "No, we'd like you to, you know, let us." Uh, film you and, and have a talk, interview you and so forth about what you've done. And um, because you've done something that uh, nobody else has done, apparently, they're, at least they're not talking about it, and you are. So how about we interview you? Well, I said, sure. So we, they effectively started this ball rolling. And as it gained momentum, uh, gained momentum, people started calling in when it was broadcast. And, and just, I got hundreds and hundreds of emails every day, and, and uh, I couldn't keep up with everything, but, but I found that people were really interested in change. They wanted to understand more. And uh, so, uh, as time went on, uh, the, um, uh, uh, the inquiries became very, very, they, They'd get a little bit, and then they'd come back and get a little bit more, and they'd say, I'm beginning to realize what you're talking about. It, it comes from the, the heart of me or the soul of me. And I said, yeah, that's, that's who you are. You are your, your infinite being is your soul. We don't talk about that much in our system because we're talking about peanut butter or, <clears throat> or the stock market or something else. But who we really are is, is, is uh, what we label as a soul. And uh, when you uh, realize that and, and, and you use your intuition rather than your thoughts, because you can think a million things in a minute, that's how fast the brain can work, and uh, not get anywhere, but just one feeling, and it's, it's all feeling, the guidance system is all feeling, it's the same as if somebody walks into your, your, your auric field, you know immediately by by scanning the energy field that's coming at you, whether this is going to be a good encounter, a different encounter, or maybe not so good. And then you can base your decision on the next move. You can move away from it, you can excuse yourself, or you can get right into it by, well, I think I know you. In other words, you can, you can um, invite the energy to mingle with and to share with. So, and it's all done by feeling. But people that don't use that intuition, they use fear, they're afraid of, well, there's somebody approaching, my boss is coming, he's going to fire me if I don't do this correctly. Well, then you'll probably get fired because of the, the way you're thinking about it. But if you feel, I've done nothing wrong, there's nothing to fire me about because I'm doing the best I know how to do and mistakes were made to be, they were created to, to, to get it better. You make a mistake and you do it again and, and you have an experience. And experience is what we have to have, not, not thought or, or um, 
trial and error, but uh, trial and error, but experience. So, because once you have an experience, you get into the state of knowing. You no longer have a belief system. You know when you're hungry, when you are thirsty, and so forth. It's a different knowing system because you've had the experience of being there and knowing who you are and stuff. So, uh, uh, well, how I, close do you think? How close do you think we are to being able to utilize these pods? As a globe. Oh, pot. I'm sorry, I got you off think the like, track. That's okay. No, you know what? You keep. You have this continuous message that you're trying to tell people, and you know what? I know that it's your spirit. <laughs> it's like, nope. Let's go back to this. We're going to talk about this some more. There's people out there that need to hear this. So I'm just going to keep throwing questions at you. So it's not. You know what? No, that's it, great. it is what it's supposed to be. Um, but I wanted to talk about the pods, about free energy. I think that. You know, if we could get this ball rolling where people could see it, feel it, taste it, and use it, that that really actually could cause a huge shift in a lot of people's thinking. But, you know, how far are we away from that? I mean, how far? We're, 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 we're in the middle of it right now. We're in a transition. And every day that something seems to be going backwards, there's something going forward. And we have to realize the difference. Um, the... Um, there is uh, one of our people that we're working with is a Kesh Foundation. They're in, in I, I don't know if you've heard of them or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, pretty soon now, their open source is, they're going open source so that everybody can experience devices that they've been making for a long time that, that work, that are uh, alternatives. Now, they're out on a, on a field where they're getting challenged, they're getting uh uh, his uh, Kesh himself was. Uh, they tried to kill him several times and so forth. So it's very difficult. But uh, in our groups, the guys that what pods are. I used to. I I came from the res out of the resonance project in in Hawaii in the Big Island. Uh, I didn't come directly out of it. I worked with a part of it, and we created our own <coughs> our own. Uh, um, Elders of the Round Table, as it was called, and um, uh, we swim with the pods. yeah, and we swam with the dolphins, and the dolphins swim in pods, and they come out together with their. We, we swim early in the morning, and they come together with different pods, two or three different pods that come around us, and they intermingle and meet and talk and share with each other everything, and then at a certain signal, they'd all go back into their own pods and. And, and go on their way. So when um, Project Camelot came out and people started contacting us, there was just little groups of people. They said, well, we got four, four uh, guys here, and maybe one or two is an engineer, and maybe the rest are just uh, garage, or, uh, garage, garage mechanics or something. Creators. Creators. Entrepreneurs. What can we do? And they said, well, just... Just keep going. Stay in touch with us. We'll put you in others like yourself, so you guys can exchange your your ideas and stuff. And they well, what what do you what do you want to call it? And I said, well, you can use the word pod because that's that's a good idea for you guys. And we'll have groups like you all over the world, and we'll have a website like uh, Blue Star Enterprise. Incidentally, that's singular, not plural. Enterprise. Um, that you can contact each other and, and and share your ideas. And so overnight it started happening, and now we have hundreds of pods. Uh, maybe, I don't know, I've lost track of, of a lot of them, but they are all, they have come to the point of realizing because you don't change anything externally until you change it internally. And when you change it internally, all of a sudden you look out and, oh my gosh, it's there. Uh, a brief example of that, when uh, I, I used the locksmith prof profession to aid me in my uh, pursuit of, of, um, of uh, uh, knowledge and wanting to share what I wanted to share with people about natural law, I, I, I was a locksmith for 38 years on the side. But I, I was my own business, so I could come and go as I felt like and so forth. But in the early stages, I had to carry rolls of quarters, 
with me on, on my van because the next call would come and I'd have to go find a phone booth, call into the dispatcher to find out where it was. And it became very, very laborious, very, very boring and, at, at a time. And I remember sitting in the cab of my, my vehicle one day and said, that's enough. I, I'm not going here anymore. This is, I would rather not do any business than have the kind of phone booth and, and uh, oh, I ran out of quarters and have to, you know, I, it was just too much. So that was, that was my feelings at the time. And then the next thing, you know, you have to realize time is what you make it. So this was some time later, that's all I can say. I realized I was talking on a cell phone and I didn't have to have quarters. I didn't have to stop and find a phone booth. And I said, well, where the... And in the back of my mind or in, in, my, in my inner phases of, of um, realizing, it just happened. It just happened. I was. I know. I was just using quarters yesterday, or a week, a week ago, or two weeks, or a month ago. But that's where time comes in because it doesn't matter. I just realized I no longer needed the, the the old way, and it dropped away because I had the intent, the, the intent to change things, uh, and and that's what everybody has, but they're afraid to. For instance, if we found out what's what's really the cause of your health problem, uh, and incidentally, there's a <clears throat> there's a book out by um, uh, Dr. Lessa, Lessa Rankin. Rankin called Mind Over Medicine. It's a good book if the audience is interested in it. I mean, it, it hits on what I'm talking about now. If you um, if you uh, uh, have an ailment that somehow the medical profession hasn't been able to, to affect a cure or affect a change in that. If you, and then this Lika Rankin, she's been an MD for 30 years or so, uh, decided to try going inside and changing the perceptions, changing the ideas inside. And, and immediately in her profession, people would come in and uh, She'd say, well, ask your body what it needs for you to change to be what you want to be. And people say, well, that's ridiculous. And they, well, try it. <laughs> because some of them tried it and said, well, I don't like my job. Well, then quit. Oh, okay. you know, I don't like my husband. Well, then divorce him. In other words, it was getting to the truth, getting to the cause of the problem. And when people acted on that, their whole life changed, their health went through the roof, every, all, the, all the symptoms and everything disappeared. And, and that's the same with us. We, we hang on to fear. You know, uh, 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 so this is what I think you're saying. When enough of us collectively can let go of our story, we can have free energy, the pots will work. <laughs> Is that all it? the pots now are in what we call a state of limbo. They're all happy. They're all they're all content because we have the devices ready to introduce. But we've we've tried to introduce them. We've been we've um, we've been uh, shut down. We've been stopped. We've been uh, in some cases bought out and shelved. Our ideas have been shelved, and we're no longer going there. We're sitting back and saying, "Well, they've dug themselves into a hole." And you're going to have to get the visionaries and the inventors and the, the little guys that have already made these little devices work uh, in order to get out of the hole. So we're going to have to be invited. And the only way we can be invited is if there's enough intelligence that has changed its perception and the awareness has come that that is necessary to use love instead of fear to build things. Because a lot of our devices, the free energy devices, won't operate on fear. It, they only operate uh, on love. See, that's so, what I was getting to. <laughs> it's again the consciousness. It's yeah, yeah, they won't work because too much <laughs> war and fear. <laughs> yes, that's exactly. They're like, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, um, okay, so this is going to, um, so I just want to tell the listeners I get accused of this all the time. Actually, I was kind of shocked about a month ago. Somebody on Facebook said, oh, 
you sound like one hand clamping kind of crap, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> that's what they said in my message thing. And so, you know, I think you get to a level of consciousness where you understand one hand clapping kind of stuff. And yes, Ralph and Marcia are, you know, kind of giving you information and it sounds like some kind of esoteric information you may not understand and it goes into that, you know, one hand clapping kind of thing. So, um, if you don't understand it, keep listening to the interviews so that you can understand it more. Um, the last inquiry I had before um, I make you guys uh, give up a spiritual practice for our listeners for the week. I, every, every, everybody I have on, uh, I have them give people a short, simple spiritual practice that they can do, whatever it is. Some farmers sometimes will be like, just don't eat, you know, commercial meat for the week, right? That's their spiritual practice. Um, but one of the things that um, you guys had said to me on the phone um, that I loved, you know, I try to teach part of what I teach is sustainability. And so many times people don't really understand what that means. They think if they're recycling, that, that, that they're living sustainably, you know, like in the natural flow. And it's really, sustainability is a whole skill set and um, a new way of believing. And one of the things that you guys had said to me on the conversation is like every time you try to build these pods or free energy, you had money and you'd buy your products and your building supplies and everything, the government would come in and take everything. Mm -hmm. And you had to learn how to look around in your environment sustainably, you know, be sustainable so that you could actually get these things built. And what you learned was learning how to be sustainable and what sustainability was was really and that you were grateful that they came in and took all the all the money bought stuff away so that you could get to the core so do you want to talk about that a little bit well sure uh, <laughs> I just Actually. loved it because I just loved it because a lot of people just would never move forward yeah, yes. they wouldn't. They wouldn't want to see what else is available and the and how to be sustainable. That you don't need anything; it's all there. It's already there. Everything you need is already there, and the, the universe is trying to give it to you every day, every minute. But you have to be receptive, and the way to be receptive is realize that you don't have to buy into anything that you don't feel comfortable with. If you're not feeling comfortable with yourself or your life or your friends or then you you're not you're not producing a, a resonant frequency that will elevate you to a higher set of friends or a, a better set of circumstances and so forth. So it's it's depending on your focus of um, let's see. I, uh, when you were saying that, I had something that would fit. Uh, uh, One thing we always say is to listen to your inner feelings. And if it feels good, it's you're on the right track. If it doesn't feel good, you you know change your perception, look at it again, uh, reevaluate what's what's happening in your life, whether it be friendship or something that you're doing. Uh, reevaluate it. If if it's of God, it's going to feel good. I've got it back. If I can get this before I forget it again, everything. Everything you have to get to this point in, in in awareness before everything will start working. Accept the fact that everything is already good. There is nothing bad. Never. It's your perception of something that seems to be bad at the moment. In other words, people will say, "Well, I was on my way to to work, and and uh, they were going to give me a promotion and a raise if I got there by eight o'clock sharp." But I had a flat tire, and it ruined my whole day because I didn't get the raise. They gave it to somebody else. In other words, you're taking a negative connotation on the experience that happened instead of a positive one, which was they had the flat tire because when the um, people came to help them fix the flat tire, they asked them if they could use this new, brand new minivan that they, they just won, and they couldn't use it because they had uh, two or three other cars, and and uh, you had a broken down car with with bald tires. So, in other words, 
you change your perspective and everything will fall in your favor if you celebrate it. Celebrate the negative. Everything that happens is, is for a purpose and a reason. There are no accidents. But we seem to think they're, they're wrong. Oh, well, I missed this or I didn't do that. And that's, that's, that's negative thinking if you want to use that connotation. But you have so to look you, at... Yeah, so what would, you, what would you say to people who are sitting on the fence, right? I mean, there's still those people that got their, you know, full-on saddle, like strapped up to the fence, and they're riding the fence, you know, looking this way, looking that way. What, what would you tell people to get them off the fence? Or what would you, well, what kind of... Well, so if we they can, were happy, if, they're, if they find... Well, beyond, beyond happiness and sadness is a, is a state of mind called peace. If they're peaceful with their life, then by all means, pursue it in any way that feels comfortable. <laughs> If you're, ride, if you're riding nice. along and it feels comfortable, <coughs> but if there's that part of you that's missing something, and you know it's missing something, then pursue it by changing your way of looking at it and changing your, your negatives into positives. In other words, you just, well, this guy didn't show up and I was expecting this, but oh, somebody else showed up instead, and this is the person that you really wanted to get in touch with and not the other one. I mean, I'm just using a metaphor. And incidentally, metaphors are the way everything's a metaphor. All our movies are metaphor. Everything we do and say is metaphors. But we got that mixed up with the idea of lying, that people are lying and so forth. No, they're creative. Uh, they are using a creative instinct when they create a picture, a word uh, a picture of the mind so you can see what they're saying instead of focusing on the details of what time of day was it, what did you have on, what, what um, it doesn't matter. I, I was there at that time and I'm presenting this message at this moment. Then it's using a metaphor because nobody knows what they wore 21 days ago, uh, uh, you know, uh, so they just said, well, I was wearing a clothes. I don't know what I, and it didn't matter because that's dealing with the effects, not the cause. The cause of the conversation is, what are you trying to tell me? And, and by using metaphors, you can create a picture and it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be green, yellow, blue, and white. It just changes the way that it, the energy is reaching you. Khalil Gibran, when he wrote The Prophet, had a, had a way of saying it. Half of what I say to you is meaningless, but necessary so the other half can reach you. So you're, you're talking in metaphors. You're, you're, you're giving your heart instead of your brain to people. Yeah, so. he's, one of, he's one of my favorites. Okay. <laughs> um, my, my grandmother was a prophet, and uh, she hid her, you know, talents and stuff in the Pentecostal church, and so she tried to route everything kind of around the Bible, but she'd come and stay with me, and she'd read the prophet by Gibran, yeah. and um, she would not put it down. She would, you know, carry it with her, and she just really, you know, fell in love with that book. You have to fight it from her, like, don't give it back, um, <laughs> because it's so... It's his writing is just really beautiful stuff, really beautiful and really insightful stuff. Okay, so um, let's let's talk about. Okay, so we have Marsha and Ralph Ring, and they have the Blue Star Enterprise uh, dot com uh, website. I highly recommend that you go on there and look at the multitude of interviews. Um, and get to know uh, more about the work that he's involved with and the other people that he's involved with um, that are moving us uh, forward in um, ways that you might not be able to believe. <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't, excuse me for interrupting, but I didn't really yeah. give you a fair shot on the, on the pods. We're at the stage now where all of our pods collectively are realizing We've got it made. They have to come to us because we are the future. Because we have these devices working on on magnetic energy. And we don't need anything else. There's no moving parts. There's no maintenance to perform. And we have these devices now that we can present when we're invited. 
but now we have to be invited because we've been shoved in the in the closets and locked up for thinking that way so, for doing so, the thing. So how how do you be how how do you invite you? <laughs> well, how, you, how does how does a can a business invite you? A government invite you? Local community invite you? How how do you guys like to be invited? <laughs> well, we're 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 being invited right now by your your willingness to put us on the air and by our uh, sharing with you, we've got devices and waiting in the wings right now to give to everybody. Uh, we're in touch with with Elon Musk, who has the, the Tesla car company, and he sent one of their, their engineers up here to work with us on, on spaceships. Uh, we're moving into the future slowly. And in order to effect the change, Musk and, and uh, uh, Cash and, and oh, dozens of people now are going open source with their information so that they can't shut us down anymore. Okay, so <clears throat> let's just kind of frame what the pods are capable of doing. Can they run a house? The electricity oh. on a house. They can run these new cars or spaceships that you would like to introduce, right? Or the work introduce those because they've already been developed in the 50s, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, they can run um, street lights. Um, they can just automatically, like Tesla's work. Is it like Tesla's work where it just drives by and then it just charges it up? Yeah. You, you build a device. And those are already built, right? So we were just telling people, yeah. like, those are already built. <laughs> you can get them. <laughs> but you have to invite the people who make them. <laughs> you have well, to raise your consciousness. Yeah, it, to be able to grasp they, it. They have to realize the difference between where they are and where they can be. And what we have to offer is where they can be without any effort, without any hard work without any toiling anymore for a living they can just invite us by listening to what we have to offer we have free and abundant energy for everybody and the, and the, pod, the pods are collectively in consciousness on this we know what we've got so it's just a matter oh, of people yeah and, and let me put this in there because that comes to another point um, that I saw in your interview that the pods are living beings Oh, yes. oh yeah! Oh, absolutely! It's and, there's, and the spaceships and the UFOs that that have been constructed that you've worked on are living entities. They're living beings, and but they don't like negative energy. Yeah. They don't run if you're negative. They don't like <laughs> fear. Um, and the pods, I'm sure, are the same, right? They don't really like a lot of that bad vibrational stuff. So they have to be utilized in a place where people can hold a certain level of healthy vibration. Oops, power outage. Oh, I got scared. <laughs> that <was just> me. <laughs> I had a power outage for a week because the government terrified me. <laughs> I'm just making a joke. But, yeah. but, you know, it's true. Like, if you want to be conscious, then everything around you, like the Native Americans always tell me, uh, First Nation people, that, you know, everything has an energy and you have to be friends with it and you have to have a relationship with it. Otherwise... It's, it doesn't want to have anything to do with you. Yeah, it, it, you, you, have to, you have to realize that everything in the multiverse is your friend. It's up to you to make it so by realizing you don't have to use fear or doubt. And if you don't like something or somebody, or just move away for a while because it's not on the same wavelength it's not in the frame of reference that you're you're operating on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it will be someday and hence is the pods we're now waiting we're waiting for people to uh realize uh because of fossil fuels because of the expense of everything and the escalation of, of the cost for for doing things and and the waste that we pour into uh yeah. war and killing and fighting can be used to make a better better world yeah and when they realize that enough, and they, they say, I, I, I refuse to go to war anymore. I'm not going to vote for war anymore. It has to stop when they, when they yeah. reach the hundred monkey or the or the uh, 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 the. Um, 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 I'm totally I'm totally in agreement with that, and I, I can't wait for the moment. I always tell people. 
I know we've won consciously when I don't see another chemtrail in the sky <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> you know, I'll know that you know it's it, the good good guys have won. So, um, uh, I I have um, one of the things that I'm interested in with the Kishi Foundation or the um, is their um, nano. Uh, their nano uh, acupuncture needles. I actually emailed them and asked them if I could buy some to try some because um, I do structural acupuncture. So I wanted to try their nano uh, acupunctures. I'm like, boy, that would be pretty good stuff. I'd do it on myself first because <laughs> I want to feel what it feels like. Um, sure. So if you have an in on that for me, you know, you can get me some, let me know. Also, all right, so I don't want to keep you um, held up too much longer today. And um, I'm going to, I'm actually going to target Marsha because I can see her back there with her lips. She's like, I know when she's like wants to rev up and say something, <laughs> but I'm going to have Marsha um, give our listeners a spiritual practice for the week. Just something simple um, that they can do and that will help them to, um, you know, make some change. What do you have for us? Yeah, I'm going to say that every every moment of the day, if, if they get frustrated or if things aren't going right for them, to go within. Just quiet themselves, be still, and listen to that inner, inner self. There's an inner self in every one of us, and it will. it is a place of peace. But when you're in the, the total uh, chaotic field, so many of us are in right now, Take a deep breath, and as you're taking that breath, breathe in the love and breathe out the, the anxiety. And then f do this three times and then feel, feel the love that's in your heart at that time or in your solar plex area. Try it because it seems to work so well for both of us and for mm. many people. Yeah. But I would say... Try that for yourself. Try to get in that spiritual place because we all are that. We we have, each one of us have that inner knowing, like Ralph calls it inner pilot light. Um, I call it my God self, whatever, whatever feels right to you. But take those three deep breaths, breathing in the source, breathing in the peace, and exhaling through your mouth and letting go of all the anxiety. And after you've done that three times, just be quiet and see what you're, how you're feeling. If you're feeling more calm and more peace, it seems. I'd like to add just a little bit to that. That if it feels uncomfortable at any time, you're not you're not where you where you really need to be. It has to feel comfortable. And if at first, and for the newcomers or the new people that haven't been exposed to this way of life, uh, persistence, persistence focused on the persistence. I want to feel good. I want to feel happiness. And, and at first, actually don't accept any negative thoughts that, that, well, you have to do this or you have to do that. No, don't accept them. Just stay in the calm and peacefulness of your feelings. And it will begin to guide you. You'll see a change right away, almost instantly. Something will change the entire picture, which you thought was impossible, because all of a sudden they don't need you, and uh, all of a sudden uh, things. Uh, have, oh, this is I didn't notice this before. You you start noticing and feeling because you're changing your perception of what you're seeing. Nothing out here is changing. It's already static energy that's 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 multidimensionally being created. But we change our way of looking at things. Whenever you feel like. Uh, saying anything that is not feeling good if you say oh that's that's awful or that's bad say no that's beautiful I just can't see it and uh, I'll wait for the time I can see it and then almost instantly it'll start changing oh I didn't notice that that, that is kind of nice and you, and you work with this and you're working on yourself on your consciousness you're raising your consciousness without realizing it just by changing your, your word patterns Word sculpturing, to use the words that feel good, not not words that don't feel good, and so forth. Is that right? Yeah, and I think another, another really exciting thing for me is to remember that everything is good. 
even if it's a chaotic experience, somebody's even talking against you or whatever, it's there for you to handle differently. It's a good thing. Celebrate it. Celebrate it because during our challenge, during our journey, we have these challenges. And, and if we can say they're all good, we can see some good in them. And always see In some. closing, because I realize you got to close pretty soon. If, the, if your audience could look at this as a big game, we're playing a big game of monopoly here. You know, I own this, you own that, we're competitive, we're, we're fighting. And, well, if you look at the wars or the fighting or the competition as beneficial to you personally because you don't want to go there. So thank you. Thank you for showing me you're a jerk or your, your company doesn't operate with the interest of everybody just for itself. In other words... You're you're learning from what they're showing you, and and they and that's called truth. You get the truth from something, and and then you can celebrate everything else that's that's happening, and uh, so it's a big monopoly game, and we'll wind up at the end of this game, which we're doing now. We're rounding this game off. We're going to start a new game here. It's already started, and and the new game starts with those that realize that it has been a game. And all our adversaries, all our enemies, all our uh, bad friends are really just as beneficial as our good friends because they moved us when nobody else could. In one way or another, we get moved forward by our adversaries. So we wind up shaking hands with the Carbell and the, the, the Illuminati and everything else. Not literally, not literally, I don't mean that literally. Well, maybe I do, but <laughs> it doesn't matter because we all realize, oh, it's just been a big game, and uh, you, you got me there, and I got you there, but we're we're playing, and let's 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 start a new game, and it's called yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, in shamanism, uh, we in a lot of the dreaming work we deal with, um, the they call it the petty tyrant, and that you have to keep coming up against the petty tyrant in order to learn how to just move around the petty tyrant, you know, how not to get stopped or absorbed by it. Um, and that you can see it for what it is, you know, more and more as you approach them um, and you engage them less and less. They And you appear less and less on their radar as you don't have the similar energy um, that they can, you know, attack you with or abuse you. So petty tyrant has always been in my lessons, you know, with shamanism, which is different than most, um, learning how to deal with the tyrants of the world um, and uh, to move, be able to move past them to see the truth in that's, yourself. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I, I really congratulate you for staying there in that state of consciousness because most people... Oh, it's not easy just, some days. <laughs> <laughs> Not so easy sometimes, but you know, you get back up, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's a yeah. gift that we all have that it is, you know, this is our journey. Yeah. And how do we handle each day and each each new experience? And to be able to celebrate it and say, Wow, even though I got fired from my job today, I know there's another door opening tomorrow. And yeah. if a, do a door has to open and close on the same pivot. It, you know, if it closes, it's also opening. Yeah. So, yeah. It, and then yeah. people, once they realize that, then, oh, I lost my job. Well, what's next? And they just ask the universe or ask them, themselves, what's next? And it'll show up. And you just have to have trust or faith. or You have to know <laughs> that you're dealing with a magnificent multiverse that loves us. That, and wants us to learn the easy way, if possible, but the hard way, if necessary. But we're going to all get there, you know, eventually. And and uh, and it's happening right now. There's new things uh, coming up now. They've got they've got cars that fly. You know, you, a little you can park it in your, your garage and pull it out and take off and, and and fly to your destination. You don't have to. So we're getting there step by step by step. And yeah. spaceships are already, there's hundreds of thousands of them around the planet now. Like, and when you get in tune with yourself and you feel those feelings that, that guide you, you'll be able to realize, oh my gosh, I'm looking at a spaceship here and stuff, because they're all over the place. And we have our benevolent friends wanting 
to come in, but they're sensitive beings. They can't stand the word uh, fear or doubt. They don't. They cringe. Or hate. Or, no, or, or hate. hate. The trees yeah, can't, can't even stand. stand hate either. None of oh. the plant beings, they don't really like it. That's why they're leaving certain areas. It isn't that we're getting rid of them or extincting them. That's an ego thing. It's they're leaving. They're like migrating or going back to their own world, you know, where it's safer for a while until they can figure out, regroup, and figure out what to do. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to totally invite you guys on. Um, hopefully, you know, we'll stay in contact and uh, still have lots to share. And I want to invite you guys back at any time. Say that there's, you know, amazing information that's come forward and you guys need to get it out or something's happening. You know, just shoot me an email and we will put you on and you can get that information out. I'll personally give you a um, an invitation for that just because, you know, mm. maybe one of those things where you need people to get the information out. So you can count on me. And I just want to say thank you so much for allowing this um, interview. And uh, um, th- and I know it's during the time of the day where I'm the most tired and kind of like droopy. So, <laughs> um, but I'm going to move into uh, closing the show. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. And I'm going to have my producer um, help move you off the show. And we can close up the show. And thank you so much. And lots of love. And um, no, just really appreciate you guys in your communication via um, um, email if you can include contact numbers and and uh, things like that where we can you know zero in on you when when because things happen all the time that I'm sure you'd be interested in you yeah. know and, and we can well, send and I'm, you I'm interested yeah I'm this. interested in you as a um, as people you know that's what I'm interested in and and as through that having a relationship with you as people whatever is important to you becomes important to me and becomes important to all of us so we just really have to kind of share what we have together in order to create more consciousness use whatever is available sure. and thank your 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 producer I forgot I his name Cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, thanks, yeah, Kat. Kat, the His patience, and Kat. diligence, and, <laughs> and uh, acceptance yeah. of what we we had to offer. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, Cat. <laughs> yeah, have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, blessings. We love you. Blessings. We love you both love you. very much. Mwah.